Hello everybody, it's Derek Goodwin. I'm with eApprentice.net. Let's get started. Um, we're going to kick this off with a presentation from Jason Kramer. Jay is a college instructor at College of the Canyons in Valencia, California. Um, and Jay also owns a uh, manufacturing consulting business. So Jay, uh, welcome aboard. Are you out there? Yes, I am. I hope everybody is ready for some fun and has lots of questions for us tonight. Um, yeah, I'm ready to take over. I can't see any messages or anything like that, but um, Derek, you're there, and I know you'll keep me up on anything that needs to be done. Otherwise, uh, whenever you're ready to hand over the desk to me, I'm ready to go. I will do that, Jay. And a few people had answered that they can hear us, and uh, someone said, hi, Jay, out there. Everybody can hear us. Okay. So actually, Jay, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let me just do a quick introduction, and then we'll switch over to begin your presentation. So oh, not a problem. Okay. So everybody, uh, welcome aboard. This is Derek again with eApprentice.net. And we have a, an online training program uh, in manufacturing and specifically uh, related to CNC programming. And I'd just like to take a moment to show you our website and just uh, show you some of the offers that we have, and then we'll roll right into a presentation. So our web address is www.eapprentice.net. Uh, the first offering we have are actual CNC courses, which mirror the courses that we teach at De Anza College. So these are online courses. We currently have beginning MasterCam, advanced MasterCam in 3D, MasterCam multi-axis, and available May 1st is our MasterCam for SolidWorks course. We also have a video library. Access to the video library is $25 a month, and you can have access to all of our content, although that doesn't in include instructor help. So our, in cor our courses do include instructor help via email, and beginning May 1st, we will be offering instructor help um, on during office hours online in real time, just like what you're watching right now. And the third offering I'd like to show you is our MasterCam Fundamentals Workbook and DVD. So far, we only have the beginning course written up um, in a workback, workbook and DVD form, but we will continue to build all of the courses into there. So that's my commercial, and I'm going to turn you over to Jay Kramer. And Jay is going to give us uh, a presentation on machining a cam follower using fourth axis machining in MasterCam. So Jay, I'm going to go ahead and change you over to become the presenter. Okay, folks. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a file that a uh, another user from our last group we did online, our last webinar, uh, asked us to review. So I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to go ahead and open up. It's a step file. So I'm going to go ahead and the file open. And we'll go ahead and use under eApprentice here. We have a typical type of file being a step file. So I'm going to go over here to step. And in this case, we have cam step. So I'm going to go ahead and open that file up. Bring this into the screen so we can see this a little bit. We can see how the file lays in space right now. On that, I'm going to actually want to reorientate this part because actually if I put this in top view, we can see that it sits in not the axis that I want it. I actually would like to see the part sitting in space that way with this side here being our origin. So I'm going to go ahead and use our option up here for dynamic X form. It asks me to select the cop file, green ball. I'm going to put my nomen where I would like that to be. This is our dynamic X form using the nomen and that position. Now I'm going to go back here real quickly and set this for manipulate access. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I would like to have this sitting like this. So I'm going to go ahead and orientate this with the Z up. I would like the X to follow along this axis here and set it like that. So this is the way I would like to see the part sitting in space. So I'm now going to go ahead and over to the option of manipulate geometry. So forcing it to actually now move the geometry for me. Selecting that option, I'm going to go to World Axis. I'm going to apply that, align it with the World Axis. I want the World Origin, and I would like to apply that one, so move it to the Origin. 
Once I hit green check, I'll right click and say isometric and you can see in this case when I go to top and right side how we're looking at the part. Okay, so to be able to do the cam, of course I'm going to need one thing as a machine. So I'm going to use, in this case we're actually going to use five axis curve uh, on this and output as a fourth to drive this. So I'm going to pick out a machine that will support this. In this case, I'm going to use my Haas uh, auto fourth axis on that. Just checking real quick to make sure. I like to see my tools assigned sequentially on that. I'm going to set another level and I'm going to create it for 10 and curves on that. I'm going to set my color here at the bottom of the screen. I always like to change my color to another color that can be visible to 12 on that. I'm going to unshade and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create curves that I can drive off of. So all I need is the bottom curve in this case. So I'm going to use the option of create curve one edge and just so it's unshaded I can see real easy that edge and that edge and I'm going to need it for both sides, that edge and that edge, right through the model. So I'm good where I sit now. So actually having that all set up, that's basically everything I need except for creating the tool pass. So I'm going to go ahead and step forward in that case. And we are going to use the option of tool path. We're going to use multi-axis. I'm going to go ahead with the default NC name on that. And good, it did pop up on the right screen. I'm going to look for curve 5 axis as selected. I'm going to use tool. I'm going to use a selected tool. Um, yes, I actually want to use a 1 inch end mill. So I'm going to use a 1 inch end mill. I can either double click on it or hit the green check and put that in on that. And we'll just go ahead and say roughs uh, groove in this case on that. Not going to use any holders at this time. Not worrying about trim to stock, but we do want to actually start looking at our cut pattern. So what are we going to use? In this case, we're going to use 3D curve. So I'm going to use this option to select our curves on that. So in this case, chain option, selecting the curve, comes all the way around. Good. Plead across that. I would like it to compensate the tool, so I'm going to at least give it computer. In this case, what it sees is the default radius offset of 125. It's going to update it to the half inch. I actually would like the tool to be more toward the center of the groove, being about a 1.200. So I'm actually going to change that to a 600. So it should stay away from the wall, close to 100 thousandths, pushing the tool down the center, because I'm going to rough it with this tool and come back in with another tool on that. Uh, looking at the curve follow method, I'm going to tell it to look about every 50 thousandths along that curve. Now looking at how we're going to control the tool axis, in this case I'm going to actually use to a point, using the options to select that. In this case I'm going to come right off the center of rotation. And of course a big deal right here is that we can see this showing us our picture here pictorially wise, a five axis, we're going to set this up for four axis. That's a nice configuration right there with the machine with the axis on the left. That's the same thing one of the reasons why I had set this to the left in that case. So looking at limits, don't need any limits this time, collision. So tip control, how do we want to control basically the depth of the contour? In that case I'd like to use the comp to surfaces in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and use the option right here, select out, select the surfaces, selecting activate solid selection. I do not want the whole solid, I want to be able to select faces. I'm going to shade by using my Alt S keyboard. Select that face and that face. Control the depth. Say OK. So we've got that. Check surfaces, no. We're going to go ahead and look at our linking. We've got at least a clearance of four inches. I'll give it five inches. I know that we got a, a basically an, an eight inch diameter in that case. So we're going to set that. We've got to retract in this case. Also, I'd like to set rough depths. So I'm going to go ahead and say, for example, we'll go three and we'll go 0.250,000 step with a single 
15 thousandths floor finish because I do want it to go ahead and go down the center, clean the floor, and then we're going to come with another tool, do the walls, and bring it down and bring all the floor to match together in this case. So I also need to look at under my linking, my exit and ex my entry and exit. So I'm going to go ahead and set those on what I would like it to use. So using with the five axis curve, we use a length, we use a thickness to keep away from the wall, and we use a height to be able to tool the tool up above it as it comes down. So you're creating a curve entry into it. So in this case, I want to make sure that the tool, in this case, when it comes in over here, I want to make sure it doesn't hit into the material. So I'm going to give it a long length here so it will actually roll above the tool, above the part. Sorry about that. So two inches in this case. Thickness, I'm actually going to say no. I don't want it to curve. I just want it to come straight down into that cut. But I do want it to start at least, say, 250 thousandths above the, above the floor in that case. And I'm going to go ahead and down here at this down here, I'm going to go ahead and say one inch. We'll make sure that doesn't hit the back wall there when it comes through. And I'm going to give it 0.2 on that. We have a good curve tolerance set. Uh, if you wanted to look at our filtering, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the filtering for 1,000s. I'm going to just go ahead and say OK real quick as it generates that. And we'll be able to left click on toolpath. In this case, let's verify that I have an option turned on. Simulate rotary axis so that way you'll actually see that run. So as we can see the part come into here. As you can see in this case, it's following the camera around. In this case, it's going to go ahead and come to that point, roll out of the cut, pick up. And we can see in this case, it's coming down above the part, not hitting the part because we've already created that, and rolling back in. And we're also looking at that we can see that we're basically down, somewhat down the center of that. If I would have actually taken a direct value, I could have set that value and set it down to the center. But we'll be OK in this case. So rolling the tool around, we'll do let that go through real quick. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and stop because we have more cuts, more cuts to do in this case. I'm going to go back real quickly, is that because I know when I get to the end, I want to be able to do something else. So I'm going to jump back into stock setup real quickly here, and I'm going to review that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is set it for cylindrical. In this case, I know it's an eight-inch diameter, and the width I length of it, not sure, so I'm going to right click, use distance between two points, between that point and that point, so that part is seven inches in length. So we'll use that as stock setup. 